Hey everyone! Uh, oh, wait. This is a video about Kailasa. Hold on. <clears throat> hey everyone, it's me, Emma, the heavy metal lawyer, and I am here for another tier list. This time, one of the greatest sludge metal bands of all time, Kailasa. Out of Savannah, Georgia, Kai Lessa began as a straightforward sludge metal band with close connections to the early 2000s crust punk scene, but would quickly become known for their experimentations, from having two drummers to using one of the lowest tunings for guitar possible to throwing in some piano. But this wide-ranging experimentation was tied together by the iconic guitar playing of Laura Pleasance, the dueling vocals between her and rhythm guitarist Philip Cope, and a heavy dose of psychedelic sounds, especially in instrumental interludes, that managed to be trippy as hell without compromising the brutality of the heavy sections of the songs. If you can't tell from the effusive tone I'm taking, Kai Lessa is one of my favorite metal bands of all time. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. First off, we got Kai Lessa, their self-titled debut album. But before we talk about that, we have to talk about Damod. Damod, a crust punk band and sludge metal band, uh, was Philip Cope's band prior to Kailasa, and Damod's last drummer would also be Kailasa's first drummer, and unfortunately, Damod's last bassist, Brian Duke, would be only on this album because he died that same year when it came out in 2001. But the major game changer and difference between Damod and Kailasa is Laura Pleasance. And folks, I'm going to try my best not to fangirl too much here, but Laura is a musical force of nature. Particularly, she has a knack for writing psychedelic guitar that is up there with legendary greats of psychedelic guitar. We're talking Rokey Erickson, Michael Monarch of Steppenwolf, Sid Barrett, and so on. That change is apparent from the opening track of No Remorse, both with the arabesque main riff and the meandering guitar parts during the song's breakdown, as well as the track Testing the Good of Man. This is definitely Kai Lessa's most traditionally sludge metal album, though, uh, particularly in terms of song structures and vocals. Nevertheless, it is a very enjoyable listen because all of the musicians are very talented and the music is heavy with lots of good grooves. For any other sludge band, this could actually be their best record, but of course we are talking about Kailasa, so it is actually, in my opinion, their worst record. But their worst is a pretty high bar because I would give this album a B. I also just noticed that this... Uh, tier is in the traditional S, A, B, C, but ranging from B to A+. Plus. I'll work with it. We'll make this work. All right, next up is the album To Walk a Middle Course. Where is it? I don't see it on here. I don't think that's it. It's not on here for some reason, but... Maybe that's an alternative album cover or something. Anyways, even in the early stage of Kailasa, where the band still had one foot in its legacy of Damod and crust punk, Laura's influence shines through on songs in this album like Shatter the Clock, my personal favorite song on the album, and the spooky beginning of the song Phantoms. And you have what I would call the Kailessa tropes very much present here, albeit in less refined forms than we'll see later on. Drum breaks with lots of tom, dual vocal yelling, and charging palm-muted guitar parts crescendoing up into breakdowns. The metal poetry is here too, especially on the song Welcome Matt to an Abandoned Life, which in addition to that great title has lyrics like Quote, looking for deception where it doesn't exist, exposing myths at every chance, disqualify what should matter. 
you can tell the band was still working out what they wanted their sound to be and how to play with each other, but the music, the magic was still there from the beginning. And it is pretty impressive that they had such a unique sound from early on. I'm going to put this one on B tier as well. And next up we have Time Will Fuse Its Worth. This album might have my all-time favorite start of a metal album. While the band definitely learned later on to not have intro tracks and just include intros on their opening tracks, I won't hold that against them too much for this album since we were still very much in the age of CDs at this point where it was less of a problem. And holy cow, the intro here is so great. Just this gradually building moans and drums. And you're just like, what is going on here? Until it explodes into the first actual song, What Becomes an End, with the titular chorus lyrics, Time Will Fuse Its Worth. The album throughout has an enormous sound made possible by the addition of a second drummer, which is especially interesting to me because Melvin's released their first album with two drummers, A Senile Animal, in the same month of the same year, 2006. It was just the year of sludge metal double drummers for some reason. Backing up the double drumming was a fuzzier tone on the guitar and an increase in the various psychedelic effects, which paired exceptionally well with the two drummers in the many instrumental interludes throughout the album. Honestly, every song on this album is fire. The grooves are super infectious and the songs effortlessly flow into each other. But if there was a second best song claim, it would be a tie between the epically driving, fist pounding, Where the Horizon Unfolds, and the ending track on the album, The Warning, which features elements from the rest of the album like a metal Liebstad. Fuck. Promised myself I wouldn't reference Wagner in these videos anymore. But also, how could I deny a shout out to the psychedelic heights reached in the song Between Silence and Sound? Sorry, I'm so obnoxiously in love with this album. I'll stop myself there. This one goes A+. I mean, I was going to put it in S tier, but this tier system is weird. I'll put it in A+. So, Kyles has a band that clearly cares about opening its albums with a bang, which is a very smart strategy when part of your signature sound is expansive, hazy instrumental interludes. You gotta give the audience a, a jump start so they can get through those. And I can imagine the band had a hard time thinking of how to top the amazing intro from Time Will Fuse Its Worth, but they managed to find an answer with their album, Static Tensions, and the answer was simple. Draw a bigger emphasis to the two drummers that gave the previous album its huge sound. And Scapegoat, the album's opening track, is my favorite drum intro of all time as a result. But the song is so much more than its amazing drumming, because as soon as the guitar and bass jump in on those iconic first seven, I think, notes, you realize, wow, these guitars are something I haven't heard before. And that's specifically because they were down-tuned to, and I think this is correct, I wasn't able to verify it, but I'm pretty sure this is correct, dropped F tuning, which the guitar player is watching this, take a second to breathe, it will be okay. Yes, dropped F tuning. So low that the band had to transpose these songs for being played live because you go out of tune very quickly playing in a guitar tune that low. Um, at least at the time. I think subsequently we now have guitars that can play dropped an octave lower and still stay in tune, which is insane to me. Um, I think you hear that on like some deathcore uh, albums that have come out in the last couple of years. But I think what really makes this a contender for my favorite metal album of all time is the surprises you get on the album. 
Time will fuse its worth is concentrated kailasa, whereas static tensions is concentrated kailasa paired with a side of piano. And this is actually incorporated into the song piano rather than just intro gimmick piano. Uh, piano. You have melodic singing, you have creative use of channels into the recording, thanks to the masterful production by none other than Philip Cope himself. The band also pulls out some new matchups of dual and even triple vocals, thanks to having drummer Eric Hernandez picking up vocal duties. It is just an exceptional album. A must listen to. It should be every on everyone's album bucket list. Uh, this this I should put it higher than the tier list itself. But since I can't do that, I'll put it right there. So next up is Spiral Shadow. This album starts out with one of the most popular Kailasa songs of all time, Tired Climb. Crowded Road is another classic track with my favorite guitar solo out of any guitar uh, Kailasa song. Probably the best use of that arabesque hammer-ons that were part of their sound since the uh, self-titled debut album. Uh, despite those two amazing tracks, though, and many other good ones like the anthemic Don't Look Back! This album isn't quite on the same level for me as Time Will Fuse It's Worth or Static Tensions, just because the album doesn't quite flow as well. Sometimes that flow is there, like the transition between Crowded Road and Don't Look Back, but other times it feels somewhat disjointed, like the space between Tired Climb and Crowded Road with the songs uh, Cheating Synergy and Drop Out. Not bad songs by any means, but just not quite flowing together. The album does have a second peek at the title track, Spiral Shadow, and the greatness of the aforementioned tracks carries the album through the tracks that are less noteworthy or connected to the rest of the album. Overall, putting this one on A tier. Uh, after that, we have Ultraviolet, and I want to start off by saying you do have some great tracks on this album, like Unspoken, that would easily could fit onto the three previous albums. And there are some dope drum breaks, like in the song Long Gone, though that song is otherwise not super great. While the meandering guitar lines on other albums have this psychedelic, entrancing sound, there are times on this album where they approach almost jam band levels of aimlessness. Instead of thinking, whoa, this is so trippy, you're thinking, where is this going? The singing on Vulture's Landing is pretty strained, and the instrumental interludes just don't really fit that well. Though it does have a good drum break and guitar solo that somewhat redeems it. Overall, Ultraviolet sounds like the band is running out of steam. I mean, literally, if you listen to the song uh, Steady Breakdown, Laura sounds tired on that song. And Laura is also clearly yearning to be playing things outside of sludge metal. She's leaning more and more towards the psychedelic sound, and it doesn't always work. Sometimes it seems at odds with what... Uh, everyone else is playing in the band. They're talented enough, at, and at this point they had this very established band chemistry to avoid the album being like bad, um, and it has enough gems that it's, I certainly would recommend listening to it, but it's definitely one of their worst albums, and I'm going to have to put this one on uh, B tier. Um, so next up we have Exhausting Fire, we end on a bittersweet note because Exhausting Fire was a high point for the band again, but also it's their final album. Technically, the band is on hiatus, uh, so maybe one day we will get another album, fingers crossed. But yes, I remember being worried that this album would be another ultraviolet, or worse, could be Kailasa's first mediocre album. But when I heard the opening track, Crusher, before the full album dropped, my heart was lifted and it made me much more optimistic. It is 
that beautiful balance that makes Kailessa's music so interesting. There are parts that are heavy, fuzzy, screeching, paired with parts that are airy and psychedelic and contemplative. While the rest of the album doesn't hit the balance quite as well as Crusher, it is a far more balanced album overall than Ultraviolet, and you get the sense that the band decided this would be their last record for the foreseeable future, that they really put their hearts into it. There's also like a nice shoegaze element to this one that doesn't feel forced or out of place, uh, especially on the track uh, Moving Day. Very different from what Kailessa was normally doing, but in a really refreshing way. And ending with a smoky Black Sabbath cover with Paranoid, you can't be mad at that. So this one goes on A tier. And that's it. That's Kailessa's complete discography. Uh, uh, if you like this video, uh, make sure to subscribe. Next, I will be doing a deep dive into the subgenres associated with doom metal. I'll also be doing a tier list of High on Fire at some point. And I will soon be starting my top 50 metal albums of 2021. It's been a super great year for metal, so you're going to want to make sure to watch that one. Yeah, subscribe. Just do it.